If at every stage of America's civil rights movement there was a king front and centre, there was nearly always a young prince alongside, John Lewis. The son of sharecroppers, he began protesting when just 20 years old, there on the march on Washington, on the buses in Birmingham, and on that bridge in Selma. And generations from now, when parents teach their children what is meant by courage, the story of John Lewis will come to mind. An American who knew that change could not wait for some other person or some other time. Lewis was born in 1940 in rural Alabama, when life in the South was dictated by Jim Crow laws which enforced racial segregation. When he started college in Nashville, the movement to end all that was beginning, and Lewis joined the sit-ins, when activists would seat themselves at white-only lunch counters in protest at segregation. Faced with beatings, they would never retaliate. I was sitting there demanding a God-given right, and my soul became satisfied that I was right in what I was doing. I could no longer be satisfied or go along with an evil system. In 1961, he became one of the original 13 Freedom Riders, travelling on Greyhound buses through the South to force the desegregation of public transport. I felt good. I felt happy. I felt liberated. I was like a soldier in a non-violent army. Lewis was beaten in North Carolina, knocked unconscious in Alabama, and jailed in Mississippi. Such attacks in the face of peaceful protest shocked the world and forced Americans to confront the true nature and extent of racism in their nation. At 23, he helped organize the March on Washington, where Dr. King preached his American dream. Lewis spoke as well. He was, until now, the only surviving speaker from that day. We are tired. We are tired of being beaten by policemen. We're tired of seeing our people locked up in jail over and over again. And then you holler, be patient. How long can we be patient? We want our freedom and we want it now. Soon Lewis and others would turn to voting rights, trying to help African Americans to register when so many barriers were placed in their way. They planned to march from Selma to Montgomery in Alabama. Yet they were met on the Edmund Pettus Bridge by state troopers who charged at them. And who was at the front line, taking yet another beating for his cause? They came toward us, beating us with nightsticks, bullwhips, trapping us with horses. This is me here. Fifty years later, Lewis returned in a different time with a very different president. If someone had told me when we were crossing this bridge, that one day I will be back here introducing the first African-American president. I would have said, you're crazy, you're out of your mind, you don't know what you're talking about. By then, Lewis had moved on from his street fighting days, serving in Congress for more than 30 years. His causes remained consistent. Even his methods were the same. In 2016, angered by Congress's inability to enact gun reform, he staged a sit-in on the House floor. How many more mothers how many more fathers need to shed tears of grief? Never fearful of speaking his mind, Lewis boycotted the inauguration of George W. Bush and Donald Trump. For him, they were two Republican presidents bookending a leader who meant far more, a black US president. And so it was Lewis who was the first to embrace Barack Obama as he walked out to make history in 2009. Why a man whose father less than 60 years ago might not have been served at a local restaurant, can now stand before you to take a most sacred oath. One thing with Barack Obama, he's not a, a victim of the scars and the stains of racism. Which he you is, are. We are. Those of us who grew up in America, those of us who grew up in, in in the 40s and the 50s, who tasted the bitter fruits of segregation and racial discrimination, we bear those scars. We are victims. Why is it an advantage for him perhaps not to bear those scars? Well, Barack Obama is a, is a composite of, of the best of America. He, uh, he, uh, he is free with his background and with his makeup, he's, he never experienced 
segregation and racial discrimination. He never saw those signs at water fountains, at bus station and train station. He never had to go to the back of the bus. In December 2019, Lewis revealed his latest, most deadly battle, pancreatic cancer. It was ultimately the fight he never won. But think of the battles he did, of the rights he won, of the America he moulded. Another civil rights foot soldier has fallen. But the path John Lewis trod is one rich with victories and lessons for America's future.